Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless isaiah 520 woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter libs of tiktok creator chaya rachik exposes the truth about what schools are teaching your kids stuff like the drag queen curricula the value of pornography you know nothing really important Ephesians 5, 11, and 12, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak for those things which are done by them in secret. She also exposes who's teaching in the classroom. One Massachusetts preschool teacher's side hustle is posting on OnlyFans. Now, Libs of TikTok alerted the school superintendent and the office there that the porn pro allegedly created content on school grounds. And for that public service, she was getting smeared by NBC News. Her account has resulted in people losing their jobs. Like one preschool teacher in Massachusetts whose OnlyFans account was outed by Raycheck. Well, now bomb threats can be added to that list. It's important to note that Haya herself is not uh, a suspect in any of these bomb threats. Um, the accusation from victims and from law enforcement is that she has helped to inspire or spark these threats by essentially creating a list. Joining me now is Chaya Rachek. Chaya, um, your response to that, quote, reporter's commentary. David is trying to frame me as some kind of dangerous, violent extremist who just causes bomb threats all over the country. And I think that the reason they're doing it, and they say so in that clip, is because they want to psych law enforcement on me to investigate and prosecute me for simply sharing what they themselves are doing. So we have teachers who are teaching like four and five-year-olds, three, four and five-year-olds, um, who has a side hustle of, of pornography, posting it online. Like she can do whatever she wants, but I mean, as, as a parent of three now teenagers, I would have wanted to know if one of the teachers was posting on porn sites and in their free time. But you would think that that would be the headline here, not that you actually helped expose this. Yes, and Laura, that was just one example, but uh, there, there are so many examples here where they're more upset at me for exposing <laughs> what's going on in your kids' schools than they are of the fact that these things are happening. They don't care that teachers are filming porn in preschools. They don't care that schools are bringing drag queens to twerk for your children. They don't care that schools have porn in their libraries. They're they just mad porn. at me for sharing yeah. it. And yeah, their agenda is like pot, porn, abortion, transgenderism, that kind of sums it up, and an open border. Um, Shia, so just re relate that to us. So the part of the photo, a photo that you saw or that has been publicized is her in the school bathroom with her is her top off or top down or yeah so that teacher it appeared was filming uh, porn for OnlyFans she had an OnlyFans account in the school bathroom and when we called the school they were absolutely mortified and shocked and she was actually fired the next day so we're grateful for the, for the school for taking a uh, quick action on that story but NBC News is more focused on you. God gives a dire warning to anyone who would cause a child to sin, as we read in Matthew 18, 6 and 7. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offense comes. This morning, controversy near Orlando after a Florida private school expelled two children over a dispute with their mother. At issue, a sticker on Michelle Klein's car promoting her OnlyFans page. It's definitely linked to, you know, explicit content, adult content for sure. My husband and I have this, you know, little wild, you know, behind closed doors lifestyle that we've now decided to share. OnlyFans is an online platform often used by adult content creators to monetize photos and videos. Other parents at Liberty Christian Preparatory School are not fans of promoting that site. That's 
a distraction to my children. The school said in part, uh, Liberty Christian Preparatory School is taking appropriate action to protect the innocence of children. Uh, there's an argument as well. One, that's part of it, but also it's a private school. They can make their own rules. And the mm -hmm. school also went on to say that consuming, producing, distributing, or advertising pornography is inconsistent with the teachings of the Bible, the church, and LCP. Obviously, this is a religious school. At first, the school asked Klein not to bring the car on campus unless the decal was removed and urged her to drop her kids off across the street. I was forced to have to, um, you know, take it off or not come on campus. And then the school sent a letter saying your family's enrollment with LCPS is terminated effective immediately, accusing Klein of promoting a pornographic website, but still offering the possibility to re-enroll her kids if she removes the sticker. Mm -hmm. Why not take the decal off? And that would seem like an easy thing to say, for sure. But for me, you know, it's, it supports my family. This provides a, a very comfortable way of life for us. And it's legal. You know, I pay taxes just like everyone else. Revelation 21.8 and 9.21. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And they did not repent of their murders, or their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. As anyone can plainly see, we are living in the last moments before the return of Jesus Christ. America is in a spiritual battle between good and evil, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. Where we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Democrat Senator Juan Mendez shows his support for worshiping the devil as he proudly honors and welcomes Satanists and their satanic ministry to the Arizona State Capitol. Members, uh, I would like to introduce a group of Arizonans, uh, some from my district, but they have membership all across the state. They are here today to confront the arbitrary, tyrannical authority of religious persecution that's scheduled for government committee later on today. Uh, today, uh, members, uh, I want to introduce you to members. We, we are graced with the presence of ministers and members of the Satanic Temple of Arizona. Please stand today. Uh, they're at the Capitol today to fight for the rights of their more than 12,000 members of their de denomination and the rights of free speech and free exercise of all Arizonans. Uh, the temple practices non-theistic Satanism, divorced from superstition, without any belief in gods or devils. They practice the religious... Uh, their, they practice the, re the religious values of compassion, justice, bodily autonomy, free speech, science, humility, and noble action. As an organized religion, they, they actively do outreach and community service and participate in public affairs where their issues might benefit, where the issues might benefit from their rational satanic insights. The mission of the satanic temple is to encourage be be beloveness and empathy among all people. They embrace practical common sense and justice. They are guided by their conscience to undertake noble pursuits that fulfill their religious values, again, particularly of compassion and free speech. Members, I, I welcome them to the floor today, uh, and we'll hear from them later on to the government committee. Thank you. Satan is working overtime as he knows he has but a short time, as we read in Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Whether the secularists and progressives know it or not, they are of their father the devil. John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar, and the father of it. First Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Hamas Recruiter The killings end when the Israelis walk out of our land. 
In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. There is a new round of negotiations underway for a potential ceasefire and hostage release in Gaza. For now, Israel continues to attack what it calls terrorist targets in the city of Rafah. And Israel's prime minister is calling for a total elimination of Hamas there. In the process, many Palestinians have been killed. Well, our Deborah Pata just sat down with a masked Hamas commander in the Israeli-occupied West Bank, where a recent poll shows that support for Hamas is soaring. Fueling Palestinian rage, an endless cycle of dust, despair, and death. And that rage has a receptive home. Young Palestinians who are disenchanted and defiant. We met Abu Abd, a Hamas recruiter, at an undisclosed location in the West Bank. I give the fighters guidance. When Israeli forces enter, I tell them what to do and how to open fire. And while the world recoiled in horror at the savagery of the October 7 massacre, chillingly, he sees it as an act of resistance. So on October the 7th, women and children were murdered. We see death every single day. Israel lost what? 1,000 or 2,000 people killed. That's nothing. But it doesn't make it right to kill women and children. This is my land, my land. So it's only normal that we take it back by force. Nor is there remorse for the more than 28,000 Palestinians killed in Israel's bombardment of Gaza. You had to have known that that would have been Israel's response, that Palestinians would suffer as a result. We are not pleased with that, but this is the path of the armed struggle. So where does this all end? All this killing, all this suffering? The killing and the suffering ends when the Israelis walk out of our land. But if they decide to stay, we shall continue to fight. And if I die, somebody else will take my place. Asked the same question, how it all ends, Baskin said, when young Palestinians no longer believe, their only option is to die for Palestine. So who does the land of Israel actually belong to? Israel was given to the Jews forever, and God first made that promise to Abraham, as we read in Genesis 13, 14 through 17. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever, and I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. The promise was then confirmed to his son Isaac, as we read in Genesis 26.3. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. The promise was then confirmed to Isaac's son, Jacob, Abraham's grandson, as we read in Genesis 28, 10-13. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set upon the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. The promised land was described in terms of the territory from the river of Egypt to the Euphrates River, as we read in Genesis 15:18. On the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. God then reaffirmed the promise when he changed Jacob's name to Israel, as we read in Genesis 35, 9-12.
Then God appeared to Jacob again, when he came from Padan Aram, and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob any more, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you, and to your descendants after you I give this land. As we can plainly see, God gave Israel to the Jews. Now turning to the north, where Hezbollah struck deep into northern Israel, targeting Sfat with a barrage of rockets. One of the rockets landed and killed one person and injured, injured several others. The escalation comes amid failing diplomatic efforts to end the more than four months of deadly cross-border exchanges. Additionally, throughout the day, there have been reported airstrikes across areas of Lebanon targeting Hezbollah as tensions escalate significantly. Ziv Hospital in Sfat says eight injured people were brought to the emergency room following rocket attacks in the city. One woman died of her injuries. The IDF confirmed that the rockets were fired from Lebanon at the IDF Northern Command Headquarters, based in Tzfat. Numerous launches were identified crossing from Lebanon into the areas of Natua, Manara, and into the IDF base in northern Israel. The army responded by striking the launching sites. Meanwhile, the city of Kiryat Shmona says that the 47-year-old mother and her 15-year-old son injured in a rocket attack yesterday remain in serious but stable condition at Rambam Hospital. Speaking from his bunker ahead of the attack on Sfat, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah warned that if Israel widens the war in Lebanon, he would respond in kind. But when the war ended in Gaza, Hezbollah would cease fire. Nasrallah's comment came after Israeli leaders warned that after Gaza, Israel would deal with Hezbollah and force them back from the border. Diplomatic efforts are continuing to avoid war between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. France is reportedly proposing a truce deal that would push Hezbollah 10 kilometers north of the border. France is proposing a delineated land border with the terror group remaining inside the UN-mandated buffer zone south of the Litani River, but outside the range of anti-tank missiles. Paris reportedly delivered a written proposal to Beirut and Jerusalem. The three-step plan includes a 10-day process of de-escalation, ending with negotiations on the long, unresolved land border between Lebanon and Israel. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. We start with news of North Korea testing more missiles. It fired several cruise missiles off its eastern coast this morning, marking the fifth such launch just this year. North Korea has fired several cruise missiles off its eastern coast near the port city of Wonsan. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff detected the launch at around 9 a.m. Wednesday. Intelligence authorities in South Korea and the U.S. are conducting a detailed analysis. The military added that it has been closely coordinating with Washington to monitor additional signs of North Korean provocations. This is the regime's fifth cruise missile launch this year. North Korea has been dialing up tensions on the Korean Peninsula with multiple firings of cruise missiles since January. On January 24th, it fired its new strategic cruise missile, the Pulhasar 3-31. It then tested the same type of missile from a submarine three days later. In the same week, Pyongyang conducted two more rounds of tests with Hwasar-2 cruise missiles off its western coast. One expert says there are multiple reasons behind the regime's frequent firings of cruise missiles. Firstly, North Korea is not barred by UN Security Council resolutions from launching cruise missiles. Secondly, the North could be using the launch to test Seoul, Washington, 
and Tokyo's missile defense systems. Third, North Korea could be intending to show that it takes the lead when it comes to military issues on the Korean peninsula not South Korea and the U.S. This drone footage claims to show the moment when Ukrainian forces destroyed and sank a Russian warship in the Black Sea. Kyiv says it targeted the vessel with naval drones off the occupied Crimean Peninsula. The Cesar Kunikov is a large amphibious landing ship that dates back to the end of the Soviet era and is used to move assault troops to land quickly in enemy territory. The strike comes as Ukraine switches gears to a defensive stance in the war, hindered by low ammunition supplies and a shortage of personnel. This, as Russia's war in Ukraine is due to enter its third year next week. Luke 21:25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Tonight, chaos in India. As police clash with thousands of frustrated farmers. Police spraying crowds with tear gas, detaining a number of protesters and setting up barricades to stop waves of tractors from rolling into the heart of New Delhi. For the farmers, it's simple. They want guaranteed crop prices and say Prime Minister Modi's government failed to deliver on promises made in 2021, following months of similar protests. Money is at the heart of their anger, and Indian farmers aren't the only ones setting fire to the system. In recent months, farmers have protested in France, Italy, Spain, Belgium, and Bulgaria. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin 
He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.